Hello and welcome again for our Thursday broadcast. This is Dr. Isaac Olatunji. Today we're going to talk about what's getting ready to come upon this world and the major player where all these prophecies are leading to. We are just going to just, just let it all out. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for Jesus Christ, for giving us the everlasting gospel in Revelation chapter 14, 6 to 12. But before we get into the word of God, let us go into a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. This beast power we identified in our last program as Roman Catholicism. Brothers and sisters, Roman Catholicism will have a major part to play in world affairs. And the Bible has exposed this uh, end time apostasy in Revelation. It's for the purpose of us hiding in Jesus. Jesus says, before these things come to pass, I tell you them. So when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Who is Jesus? He is the Christ, the anointed one. But the Bible makes it very plain that Antichrist shall come. And Bible, the Bible talks about this in Revelation 13, where the emergence of the Antichrist power in Revelation 13 comes up out of the sea. Revelation chapter 13. Now, the Bible calls the Antichrist the beast, but nevertheless, it is the same power in Revelation chapter 13 as in Daniel 7 of the little horn, known as Antichrist. And Protestant reformers, the true Protestant reformers, the original Protestant reformers, all biblically identified Roman Catholicism as Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, the word Antichrist simply means in the place of Christ. In the Greek, the word anti means in the place of. Paul says he will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Brothers and sisters, these prophecies have been fulfilled in the uh, revealing of Roman Catholicism and the papal power. And the third angel's message exposed this power as the beast and also how Protestantism will form an image of the beast by enforcing the mark of the beast. We found out that the mark of the beast will be the enforcement of the national Sunday law. And the, this will be fulfilled when the United States shall enforce Sunday observance at the instigation of the Protestants. And brothers and sisters, it is time for us to be students of Bible prophecy. And by studying Bible prophecy, we'll know exactly who the major players are so that we can hide in Jesus and stay away from these apostate powers that seek to take you away from Jesus. Jesus makes it very plain. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And as you study the prophecies, he is with us as we study these prophecies in order for us to grow in Jesus. God has a special message in these last days, and God is letting us know that it's time for us to reveal the truth. Now, Bible says, Revelation 14, verse 8, the Bible talks about the second angel's message, and it's repeated. We'll talk more about that tomorrow as we repeat the second angel's message on a grand scale. Now, notice what, notice what the Bible says. The Bible says in Revelation 14 and verse 8, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now we're going to hit this in two parts because we're dealing with this beast power, the whole world wandering after the beast. So what we want to do is we want to go to the scripture. Now, before we go to the scripture, uh, let's uh, just kind of do a small recap. And we're going to recap from what we talked about last um, yesterday. Then watch this right here. We're going to show you something here because in Revelation, the Bible talks about and exposes this work. As you see here, we expose here the papacy. As you see the Pope here with the Jesuits as this Antichrist. And last night we talked about it where it says, as we approach the last crisis, it is a vital moment that harmony and unity exist among the Lord's instrumentalities. The world is filled with storm and war and variance, but yet under one head, the papal power, the people will unite to oppose God and the person of his witnesses. This union is cemented by the great apostate. Spirit of prophecy, 
last day events 131 as you see is identifying exactly how this is all going to happen this one head that the whole world's going to wonder which revelation 13 has already told us the papal power the people will unite but we as seven day adventists are not to unite with this power why because the roman church let's look at the screen right here great controversy 565 566 says that the roman church is far reaching in her plans and modes of operation what is her plan what is her plan her plan is for world domination for the whole world to worship her and it's going to happen notice what it says right here and modes of operation she is employing every device to extend her influence and increase her power and so while uh we are waiting to, uh, to see this mark of the beast to be enforced understand that roman catholicism is making their moves too for a fierce and determined conflict to regain control of the world to reestablish persecution and to undo all that protestantism has done and this is also revealed in uh great controversy 580 and we're going to talk about how this is going to happen and we're going to take it to a special prophecy in revelation 17 that's going to show you how the world's going to wonder after this beast power the roman catholic Church, great controversy 580 it says with all this ramifications throughout the world and the ramifications priest uh prelates jesuit priests nuns etc form one vast organization under the control and designed to serve the interests of the papal see it's millions of communicants in every country on the globe including america are instructed to hold themselves as bound in allegiance to the pope which means that the pope comes before any constitution whatever their nationality or their government they are to regard the authority of the church as above all other though they may take the oath of loyalty pledging their loyalty to the state though joe biden may be the president of the united states he is still a roman catholic though he may have made an oath to the constitution but yet the back of this lies obedience to rome absolving them from every pledge inimical to her interests. and we're going to talk about that because having a catholic president is very serious and what has made this thing so special is the jesuit order and as you see the question is what is a jesuit as you see right here brothers and sisters what you will find out that in history the jesuit order has been very very instrumental in helping the roman catholic church to get to a special place of prominence brothers and sisters the jesuits is a special group of agents in the catholic church whose purpose supreme purpose is to overthrow the faith of protestants because protestants were taking more people out of the catholic church following the reformation and the Jesuits were founded by Ignatius Loyola and brothers and sisters through this secret order, brothers and sisters, we're seeing a lot of things. Look what it says right here in Great Controversy 235. It says under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state, climbing up to be counselors of kings and shaping the policies of nations. Now, this is what they've done in the past, and they've done this right now. They become became servants act as spies upon their masters and the jesuits rapidly spread themselves over europe and wherever they went they're following the revival of popery and brothers and sisters the jesuits has gone as high as the congress to where you had a chaplain that was a jesuit and you have jesuit counselors brothers and sisters all over politics this is very serious now i want you to I want you to look at this book that came out uh, and it came out um, last year. And this is a book called God's Diplomats, as you see here on the screen in the new book, God's Diplomats, and it unveils the secret history of Vatican diplomacy. It says a new book on the history of the Vatican's international relations shows how Pope Francis is only following in his predecessor's footsteps in standing up to the United States. It says, quote, in a new book, God's Diplomats, Pope Francis, Vatican Diplomacy, and America Armageddon. Journalist Victor Gatton unveils the inner workings of the Holy See's diplomatic efforts. But what are these diplomatic efforts? See in the next slide here, one of the Vatican's most important but least studied departments is actually one of its most extensive. The massive network of lay and religious people engaged in peacemaking. And when it says lay and religious people, they're talking about Roman Catholics involved in this. And one of those religious people, I believe, are the Jesuits engaged in peacemaking 
information gathering and international diplomacy who throughout history have swayed governments and challenged kings. We already read that in Great Controversy 235 to where they have uh, shaped the policies of nations. Now look at this right here. Now this is on this next slide. It says the Pope can count on a network of Catholic charitable organizations, lay movements, missionaries, and nuns spread across the whole world. Remember what Great Controversy said, all over the world who have a direct insight into the communities they serve. In addition, it has a permanent observance status at the United Nations. And now, brothers and sisters, as you may have heard, they are part of it now with this Paris Climate Change Agreement, allowing it to get involved in the nitty gritty of global debates, Gatan said. The Holy See representatives called nuncios cultivate relationships with most of the world's governments. Notice it here, most of the world's governments relying on information gathered by Catholics on the ground. What purpose is that? For what we talked about in great controversy to regain control of the world and to reestablish persecution and to undo all that Protestantism has done. That is very serious, brothers and sisters. And this is the reason why we are exposing this. Now notice this right here. I got it. That's very powerful. Now I got to show you this right here this is very deep this is very deep god is um has unveiled this for the purpose for us to know the truth and look at this right here. let's look at this uh, uh article from the economist it says papal diplomacy this is from back in 2007 it says the vatican has one of the world's busiest but least known diplomatic services does it deserve its special status it says a former papal envoy to a war torn nation tells with pride how the American embassy would send a diplomat each morning to ask him about war zones, knowing that the Pope's man would have been fully briefed by local nuns. Oh, I thought nuns were just worried about uh, 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 just, you know, spiritual things. But brothers and sisters, they are heavily involved into politics. And the purpose of this is for world domination. Let's look at this right here. Look at this one from New York Times. This came out um, some years ago. It says leaked cables show Vatican tensions and diplomacy with the United States. The cables were obtained by WikiLeaks and made available to the New York Times and other news organizations. They do not appear to contain any bombshells about the Vatican, but they provide a telling glimpse of how American diplomats often rely on the Roman Catholic Church's worldwide network. Did you hear that? Worldwide network prelates for intelligence. This is very serious. Brothers and sisters, I mean, all this does is just confirms what the Bible says here. And all what we've been talking about and what we've been talking about on our Sunday law updates and what we've been trying to do, brothers and sisters, is all leading towards the worship of the beast. Brothers and sisters, this is very serious. And with climate change and with other things, brothers and sisters, we need to watch this. So what we want to do is we want to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 17. In Revelation, the 17th chapter, we're going to look at um, some verses which is going to lead us to where we are going to go and how all this is going to come to pass. All we got to do is just look at the prophecies and follow Jesus. Now, let's look at this right here. Let's look at um, the scripture. Here. We're going to put it up here on this slide. We're going to put it up on this slide so you can read this. Now, Revelation chapter 17, 10 through 13 talks about the global aspect of what's getting ready to happen. Now, we know that the United States is going to enforce it, but how but these chapters show how the devil's working on the governments of the world to be in alignment. So when the United States does it, then everybody does it. Now, in the book of Dan uh, Revelation, chapter uh, 17 and verses 10 through 13, the Bible says in verse 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is and the others not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space and the beast that was. And it's not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and go of into perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now, what we're going to get ready to do here as you continue to look at the slide here is the formation of how this is going to come about. Verse 10 and 11 is very pivotal because verse 10 says that five are fallen. Let's look at the screen here. Who are the five that have fallen? We see Babylon, which ruled from 606 to 538 BC. 
Medo-Persia, which ruled from 538 to 331 BC. Greece, 331 BC to 168 BC. Rome, 168 BC to 476 AD. And the fifth head that fell was Roman Catholicism in 1798 when the Pope was put in prison, thereby inflicting a deadly wound. Now the Bible says five are fallen, but one is. And who is the one that is? That's right. As you see there, the one that is, is the papacy in its wounded state. Brothers and sisters, the head, the papal head right now is still in existence. Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome fell. They're no longer in existence as world powers. But the papacy, which fell in 1798, is still in power as a religious power only. It's in its wounded state from 1798 to the present. But the Bible says, and the other is not yet come. Who is the other that's not yet come? Right now, they're talking about a great Reset the world united the ten horns the ten horns brothers and sisters is the other does not yet come The number ten is symbolic of the comprehensive whole the comprehensive whole of the world brothers and sisters is seeking politically to become one There's a talk of a great reset to unite world politics and we're not everybody into a new world order But the Bible says that they won't be able to do this politically because the Bible says that they will not cleave one to another Revelation chapter uh, 17 verse 10 says and, and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space It's going to continue a short space this uh, uh, um, Seventh head the world united brothers and sisters. They're going to come together only for a short space, but how? The Bible tells you in verse 12, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet. See, the ten horns want to come together as a kingdom, but they receive power as kings for one hour with the beast. So therefore, brothers and sisters, they won't be able to unite together politically globally, but they're going to come together with the beast power, which is Roman Catholicism. And these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The one mind means the whole world coming together as one and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast and the beast that is the eighth brothers and sisters that was and is not is and will be the revived roman catholic church where he will receive a deadly wound to where the deadly wound will be healed and the whole world will wander after this beast brothers and sisters we're going to see all the world united but let's go back to a scripture revelation chapter 17 and verse 11 the bible says the beast that was and is not Revelation chapter 17 says the beast that was and is not and yet is meaning he was in power He's not in power, but yet he will be in power in the future It's a symbolic of the papacy this was stage from 538 to 1798 as a church state power the papacy and the is right now in the is not stage He's not in power from 1798 to the present but yet is yet will be in power which will be the revived papacy from the Sunday law to the second coming brothers and sisters God has outlined this and all the world will come together with this beast power testimonies volume 9 page 11 as you see on the screen it says the agencies of evil are combining their forces and are consolidating they are strengthening for the last great crisis and then it says that great changes shall soon take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. Brothers and sisters, how is this coming together? Time Magazine shows you an article how Pope Francis has filled a global vacuum. And what we're showing you now is, is how the beast is about to be in the yet is stage to where he's about to come back into power. It says here how Pope Francis filled a global vacuum. And it says amid the din in Europe, one voice has risen above the rest, that of Pope Francis. The substance of his encyclical, Laudato Si, on the environment wasn't particularly groundbreaking. It that it was received with such surprise fanfare speaks on how little we expect from religious statues when we weigh in on science or religious figures. The real takeaway is that there's an obvious gap in global leadership and the Pope has stepped into that role admirably. Wow. Global leadership. But it is remarkable. How much now we depend upon a person? We depend upon a person. That's interesting. We depend upon a person who rose to the ranks of the Catholic Church, of a conservative institution like the Catholic Church. Wouldn't it have been better if the same message had come from the Secretary General of the UN? Maybe so, but it would have fallen on deaf ears. Let me show you this other article in Time Magazine. Look at this right here, December 2nd, 2015. How world leaders must listen to the Pope. Wow. World leaders must listen to the Pope. 
on climate change. Brothers and sisters, this is very, I don't need to read it to you. This tells you is the papacy has set themselves up, brothers and sisters, and climate change is the issue right now. Let's look at this right here. Let's look at this next uh, slide here. Because um, in 2015, June 18, 2015, there was a papal encyclical written by Francis called Laudato Si. Laudato Si, brothers and sisters, was the uh, encyclical written by the Pope for the purpose of world domination. And it says here, just some points here that I want to uh, bring out and then I'll read it to you uh, in detail. The Pope says, now of the deteriorating, deteriorating global environment, I speak to every person who lives on this planet. Now, hold on now. When a Pope writes an encyclical, an encyclical is only for Catholics alone. But the Pope has gone beyond this scope now and he's going global, brothers and sisters. He's speaking to everybody who lives on the planet for the purpose of people listening to him. The Pope is positioning himself as the world leader. It says, quote, the second one, the interdependence forces us to think of one world for a common project. A common project, brothers and sisters, means everybody's working on this together. Pope Francis in this letter calls for one to manage the global economy. And there's an urgent need for a true world political authority. Brothers and sisters, uh, there's an urgent need. He is making a pitch for him to lead out. Brothers and sisters, and I want to do... I want to take you to another slide and this other slide is going to show you uh, exactly the whole statement in its context and this is very important the whole statement in its context with the pope is calling for everybody to come together brothers and sisters we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right before our very eyes here it is right here it says quote the dato c number 75 175 it says to manage the global economy mm. to revive economies hit by the crisis to avoid deterioration of the present crisis and greater imbalances that would result to bring about integral and timely disarmament food security and peace for when they shall say peace and safety then destruction comes upon them to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration for all of this there is a true there is a need for true world political authority as you see Laudato C right here brothers and sisters I believe is the papal document for world domination. And brothers and sisters, if you don't think that this is real, brothers and sisters, you got another thing coming. Brothers and sisters, the mark of the beast is soon to be enforced. And we know that the United States is going to enforce it by law. But what happens is, is this right here. We see the papacy making their move for world domination. They're positioning themselves for world domination. And God has called us to expose it. Now, as you see here on this side, you see Laudato Sing on care for our common home. In this encyclical letter, he's talking about care for the common home, where the whole world is to unite with him. He's calling for the whole world to unite with him to save planet Earth. All this is doing is playing the prophetic scene as exposed in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy. Now, in this book, Laudato Si has six chapters. Now, the last chapter is ecological education and spirituality. Now, this last chapter in ecological education and spirituality outlines what we've been talking about here. Notice this, Laudato Si chapter six. Notice this right here. This is very deep. You have... In chapter six, you have um, nine sections. Look at section number three. Section number three is called ecological conversion. Ecological conversion. And in number six, it says sacramental signs and the celebration of rest, where he plainly talks about the necessity of keeping Sunday, brothers and sisters. This is very deep. So the papacy is positioning themselves. But notice what it says, ecological conversion. That's very deep. And I had to do some research. And guess what? I found this article right here. Look at the screen right here. Times of Malta, uh, December 1st, 2015. And this is right after he talked about ecological conversion. Ecological conversion also means dealing with time differently both as an individual and as a society. We need to rediscover the rhythm of time, the alternation between work and rest with, notice this right here, Sunday as the commonly shared weekly day of rest. Brothers and sisters, we read in Revelation 13 that this whole earth would worship through an observance, brothers and sisters, that observance will be a weekly day of rest legislated by law. There will be a national Sunday law and a global Sunday law. And the papacy, brothers and sisters, is instigating this. And just as God has told us, we are seeing this end time scenario come together. 
But some people say, Pastor, Rome has changed. But brothers and sisters, this is what Spirit Prophecy says. Let's look at Great Controversy, page 571, and go to the screen. It says, the Roman church now presents a fair front to the world, covering her apologies, her record of her hall cruelties. Just recently in Canada, she, they, she apologized for their treatment, and they had made another apology. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. The Bible identifies the beast as a leopard, and can a leopard change their spots? And we know the answer is no, meaning that this beast's power would never change. Every principle of the papacy that existed in past ages exists today. Do you see this right here? The papacy that Protestants are now so ready to honor is the same that ruled the world in the days of the Reformation when men stood up at the parable of their lives to expose her iniquity. Brothers and sisters, we see the Roman church seeking for world domination. And so while the first beast is seeking world domination, the second beast power is seeking to establish a Sunday law. And these two agendas are highlighted in Great Controversy 581. Let's read it right here. Great Controversy 581, the two agendas outlined. Ellen White says that Protestants little know what they are doing when they propose to accept the aid of Rome and the work of Sunday exaltation. While they, the Protestants, are bent upon the accomplishment of their purpose, which is Sunday exaltation by law, Rome is aiming to reestablish her power to recover her lost supremacy. Brothers and sisters, we see the two things outlined and look at this right here. I found this on social media. Somebody put this up, my American dream. And you see on one side, the Statue of Liberty, which you know that was liberty, but notice what it says here as this person put Mary here. This is dealing with Catholic supremacy. Look what it says right here. This was an Instagram user. July 4th, 2022, you see what it says, quote, my American dream is that one day the United States will become a Catholic nation. The Catholic Church in the United States has made great contributions to this very nation. And you simply cannot ignore this very fact. It says converting this nation as well as its non-Catholic citizens to the Catholic faith should be and must be our important duties that we must accomplish, especially in the time in which we are living. We need to do our part and bring others to the true church of Jesus Christ. And that true church is the only is only the Catholic church. Happy 4th of July. This is very serious. And if this person is thinking this, brothers and sisters, what is the organizational leaders thinking? I believe with all our heart that we're seeing Revelation 17 come to pass just as the lovely Jesus prophesied. Now, what we want to do is look at this um, article right here where it says, this is from Vatican News, this came out in July 13, 2022. The Pope said that nations must work together to adapt to climate change. So the Pope is really pushing this Laudato Si document, trying to put it in practice to bring everybody together. And notice what it says, Pope Francis made his oft repeated call for an ecological conversion, which we already know involves Sunday worship. Saying this process requires everyone to be grateful for God's creation to live in communion with one another and to work together to deal with environmental problems. Everything is connected, repeated the Pope, added, adding that promoting the long-term common good of our planet is essential to genuine economic, ecological conversion, promoting the long-term common good of our planet. Brothers and sisters, the Pope wants a Sunday law. He noted that the Holy See and the Vatican City State have recently acceded to the UN Framework Convention on climate change and the Paris Agreement. Now, we want you to look at this next one right here, reducing em emissions to respond to climate change emergency. It just shows you how Great Controversy 589 is being played out. It says the Christian faith offers a particular contribution in this regard. The book of Genesis tells us that the Lord saw all that he had made and that it was very good and entrusted human beings with the responsibility of being stewards of his gift of creation, Genesis 2.15. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus reinforces the goodness and the natural world by reminding us of God's care for his creatures. So the church is getting involved. Now this um, last slide we wanna show you on this, this came out um, last year. And I want you to look at this right here. Now, it was a webinar, this is from Vatican News, a webinar urges common efforts to care for biodiversity. Same thing as Ladato C is saying, and this is uh, Cardinal Peter Turkson, the Pope's right-hand man. It says, Cardinal Turkson further highlighted that human beings have the responsibility to take care of nature. He explained that this comes from the book of Genesis. When at creation, God charged Adam to till and keep the garden. 
to dress and keep. This imperative of care also extends, look at that right there, to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath, which for the Catholic is Sunday, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. What? To, to preserve creation, we got to keep the Sabbath. We got to have a Sunday law in order to do it. Have mercy. Sabbath has a sense of liberation and respite. Rest to any system that is oppressed and lives in bondage. Brothers and sisters, we see prophecy being fulfilled. And brothers and sisters, we have a mighty work. Seventh-day Adventists have been raised up by God for one purpose, and it's the priestess end time message. And Sister White says here in the two quotes we show you right here, Sister White says in Last Day Events, page 43, God has a distinct people, a church on earth, second to none, but superior to all their facilities to teach the truth, to vindicate the law of God. Councils and diets and foods, page 76 says, we are the Lord's denominated people to proclaim the truths of heavenly origin. And the most solemn sacred work ever given to mortals is the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Brothers and sisters, this is the work that God has called us to do, and it is imperative that we do it. And this ministry has been so uh, blessed by God that we want to show you right here on this slide what we're making available to all those around this around the united states and around the world we have here as you see right here our new third angels message postcard our new third angels message postcard we want to create awareness global awareness to where we want to just preach the message that sunday worship will be the mark of the beast which is implicative when the sunday law is in force do not receive it for more info go to 666 what is the mark dot com six 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 what is the mark dot com to where if you are interested in ordering this all you got to do is go to the order form and for those that live in other countries we do ask that you donate a little bit more so we can cover the shipping brothers and sisters the shipping is free but what happens is for those of you living in other countries it's costing a lot so we thank god we get we have got thousands out and we want to get more to create awareness go to our website six 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 what is the mark Dot com. Brothers and sisters, church and state is going to unite to enforce the mark of the beast. And I want to read to you a statement and show you one last picture. This here is from Testimonies to the Church, volume 7, page 138. We are told that seven day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separate from the world. And by the great cleaver of truth, he has cut them out from the quarry of the world and brought them into connection with himself. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. The greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortals, the most solemn and fearful warnings ever sent by God to man has been committed to them to be given to the world. God has committed to us to preach this present truth message in these last days. And in closing, brothers and sisters, we have a mighty work to do because God has called us to preach this end time present truth message to the world. And if we would do what he says, brothers and sisters, the end can come. Jesus says, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And when the end comes, my favorite slide here will be with Jesus. Hallelujah. On the sea of glass, Ellen White talks about the 144,000 in a perfect circle, looking at the one who died for us to save us. And we're going to be on that sea of glass with Jesus pretty soon. Praise God. Praise God. And if you want to be with Jesus on that sea of glass, all you need to do is give your life to him. Surrender to his lordship and obey his commandments. And God is going to see you through. He's going to protect you with a hand that will never let you go. We want to thank God for tonight and tomorrow. Oh, man, we've had a powerful week. Oh, we're going to just going to wrap it all up together as we talk about Babylon, brothers and sisters, and how it's all coming together. And then we're going to talk about much more stuff as we continue to talk about what's coming down the pipeline. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we ask for the Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord, to this end we pray. Bring us back out tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we'll see you. And until next time, may God truly and richly bless you.